Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another Cortex video. Today, why don't we look at Dissidents, an interactive novel, what does it say? Uh, by the way, this is from Phil Royer, who did a Simple Pixalo, as well as a Hype Timer. Uh, so I've been trying to play this game for a while. I didn't order, I didn't get it on the Ouya, because... I don't know. They lost my credit card information, and I was getting this Razer TV thing, so I waited on that. I actually bought it on my Steam, but for some reason, it doesn't play on my Mac. But anyways, so I decided to get on this game and try it out. So let's see what this is about. Oh, there we go. Sorry, it just took a couple tries to get it to work. I was worried there for a second. Anyways, uh, let's uh, begin, I guess. Let's see what this is about. Tutorial begin. Oh, there we go. Uh, begin or tutorial? Uh, let's do the tutorial. Uh, okay, so that was one issue. There was the controls, help menu, A, B, help menu. Play pause plus minus ten. Ugh. Okay, I think I got this. All right, let's hide this and let's begin then. Was that bathroom? Brittle. Uh... Hold on, I was trying to get over here. Can I do anything? Nope. Can you? Okay, by the way, I was seeing what if I hit play. Anyways, mm, my father moved into lived in a 150 square foot apartment. Every morning at 9.42 a.m., he would rise and make English breakfast tea. Why not make it the night before? Oh yeah, people don't like iced tea as much. So yeah, anyways, mm, uh, while letting uh, the tea sit uh, steep for 30 minutes and 14 seconds, he showered. Bartholomew was content. He had, uh, he had what he needed. A small bookcase at the end of the bed which held whatever adventures he wanted to have. The excitement in his life came from his work as a movie theater projectionist. He had all the journeys, thrills, and triumphs he could ever write. He ever needed right there in the booth. He also had to watch some pretty crappy movies though. I'm just saying, you know, they're all, they're not all, um, Rosebud. No, what was the name? Citizen Kane. They're not all Citizen Kane. By the way, that's a movie not a lot of people know, and it used to be considered the greatest movie of all time. At least when I went to school, that's what they taught it. Mm. Seeing every film over and over again until his memories and scenes from the movies were seamlessly merged together. He often found it difficult to tell which to tell his own past apart from those of the characters in each film. Bartholomew had forgotten how many years he had worked at the Trivia Theater. He remembered the first time he had heard the whirl and felt the heat emitting from the projector as they flung film from uh, frame after frame, I can read, in front of the lamp. At the end of the evening, at the end of a long evening, long after patrons of the theater had left for... Is it A, B? There we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. I took a little break there. Mm. The night... Uh, wait, 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 wait. I left for the night. Bartholomew would tuck the remaining half of his lunch hoagie into a paper bag and walk home. After slowly reading the next chapter in the novel he was currently enjoying, he would turn off the lamp and fall asleep at 12.56 a.m. Much like the protagonist from one of the dozens of films he loaded, Bartholomew's simple life was about to be upended by an innocent entrance of a supporting character. On the 14th of March, at 1 p.m., as Bartholomew returned from the sandwich shop with his sandwich, I know lunch, I liked mine better, 
he spotted a young girl peering into the booth. He had left the door ajar to help ventilate some of the warm air created by the projector. Projector used during the morning showings. He's watched her tap her foot in an impatient, expecting manner, all while shaking glances, uh, sneaking glances through the door. Bartholomew cleared his throat, which made her jump and turn around quickly and looked a look, a surprise on her face. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's not English tea, but it does help my throat. Hi there. Oh. Hi there. I'm Clementine Strew. What's your name? She asked, extending her hand in introduction towards Bartholomew. He suspiciously approached her, cautiously, overcoming his annoyance at having his routine interrupted. Can I help you with something? He said. He re, uh, released her hand after a curt shake and walked past her into the booth, mentally preparing for the afternoon's first showing. He shuffled around the small booth, preparing in the projector to make sure it was operating correctly. The next showing of the new Stephen McQueen. Steve McQueen. Steve Vi I always thought it was Stephen McQueen. Eh, Steve McQueen. Uh, flick was in 31 minutes. Uh, wait a minute, how did I read that? Oh, yeah, 31 minutes was to begin. So, peering, preparing the reels at his workbench. <clears throat> you actually, uh, uh, yes, actually, I, I was wondering if I could ask you a question. Clementine had fo followed him to the booth and made herself comfortable in the corner. Man. Mm. Why does my indigestion always seem to interrupt when I'm doing voices? <laughs> All right. Uh, da, 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 da. She pulled out a notebook, thumbed through several pages, then waited for Bartholomew to respond. He merely nodded instead of answering. Needing no prompting, Caroline Clementine pulled out a small cassette recorder from her pocket and in a of and in a in as obvious a way possible, set it in a stack of boxes a few feet from Bartholomew. He understood by this gesture that it had an uh it has the object of comes to beginning recording. Yes, this was his chance to object. He couldn't think of any reason and said nothing. Let me grab my controller again. <clears throat> The question I have for you is, what is the meaning of life? She paused, pencil poised over her notebook, waiting for Bartholomew, methodically setting up the next projector wheel. His face scrunched in a thoughtful expression while he finished what he was doing. Why ask me? He said, choosing the first logical response he could think of. She paused for a second forming her thoughts carefully before saying, Because you've seen all the lives. Uh, excuse me? Aren't you the one who runs this projector? That means you have seen all the memories, uh, all the movies there are to see, and all the ways we thought to live so far, right? Bartholomew paused. <clears throat> he never thought about this, thought about it that way. Well, yes, I suppose you're right. His face once again scrunched in thought. He com sorry, the music stopped there for he he contemplated her question as it was one he had never been asked before. Well, that's quite a question. I haven't given it much thought. I guess the meaning of life would be the sum of total of whatever decisions we make in our lives. Hmm. There's a better way to say this. All throughout life, there are choices we have to make. Decisions we face that, deci that decide, or seem to, decide what the next decision will be. But I think that's where our lives will go. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's a new sentence. I think... That where our lives will go is determined by some other cosmic force. The director. Uh, there is some being, director, or maybe a group of beings, the producers, 
or maybe just the universe that decides what our lives will look like. But I guess the truth is it still him or Clementine. Oh, well. mm, it's still him. Mm. But I guess the choices we face are already known by the cosmic force. For instance, imagine that you go to the to get a shake and fries, and when the boy behind a counter asks if you want a small or a large, you pick the large because you're fat. Therefore, by some reasoning, the choice is only a choice to you. It's actually already determined whether you're going to pick the large or the small. Hmm, that really doesn't answer the question. Let's see. Okay, how about this? The meaning of life is to get to the end of the... Th Who's speaking now? Oh, this is her again. Excuse me for a second. Actually, I be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I tried to clear my throat, give it a little bit of rest, drink some water there, see if that helps. But I don't know, something's not right today, but we'll move on anyways. Hmm, she said. That doesn't really seem to answer the question. Let's see. Okay, how about this? The meaning of life is to get to the end of the decisions, I guess. Uh, I guess at that point, the universe has decided we've completed our purpose, which ultimately it somehow decides and we die believing we've played a part to further humanity. This was dark. Bartholomew knew it. He loaded the uh, reel. So is that, I see, who was that? So that was Bartholomew saying that still, okay. So Bartholomew's pretty dark, isn't it? Anyway, this was dark and Barth Bartholomew knew it. He loaded the film reel into the open projector and set the track. Once the projector door was shut, he turned to Clementine and shrugged. That's all I got. Does that work? He asked. His voice has changed a little bit, hasn't it? Mm. She caref uh, carefully stopped the recorder, put both the recorder and her pencil and notebook back into her bag. Standing up, her face had a thoughtful expression and she folded her arms in front of her. Clementine looked at Bartholomew and said, No, there has to be more to that than the meaning. There has to be more to that to the meaning of life. If you don't mind, I'll be back tomorrow. At the same time, hopefully, you'll have more for me. And with that, she swiftly walked out the room. Bartholomew stood there with a confused expression on his face, trying to make sense of what just happened. After a few moments, he decided to push it out of his mind for the rest of the day. That evening, he went home at the usual time. He pulled out an old can of tomato soup from the culvert, most likely past its expiration date. Earlier that day, Bartholomew had eaten his entire sandwich while pondering why his appetite has been so high, or has been so high lately. He chuckled to himself and wondered if the girl really meant what she said. She wanted another answer. I can read sometimes. Bartholomew read another chapter of his book, then laid down into a dark, tired... Uh, he laid in, in the dark and tried to think of a better answer for tomorrow. At 12.56 a.m., he drifted off to sleep. Damn it, why do I always pick books to read? Mmm! And my voice never helps. Okay, so now we're in a puzzle. I can move. I can, okay. Mm. By the way. Uh, so I push up and it goes all the way up there. So. Alright, the maze. Um. So what I need to do. Oh, is that it? I think I got it already. Because with mazes, I usually follow it backwards. But with my eye set, I'm usually off. Like, I think I am here. Nope, that's right. Okay, cool. Mm. So I unlocked the next chapter. Mm. Excuse me. 3-15-1969. The next day, Bartholomew worked at the usual time. He made the usual tea, stepped at the usual 
uh, in, uh, stepped at the usual increment and then took his usual shower. Usually, uh, steeped, rather, excuse me. I was about to say, how do you step in the usual increment? You steep the T. Gotcha. Usually, this felt normal, but this morning he didn't feel normal. The discussion and thoughts of the day prior had taken his mind on a numerous tangents. Bartholomew tried to throw the thoughts to the back of his mind by mentally running through the process of cleaning the mechanical portion of the projector. This was quite an effective and in a manner of minutes, this is quite effective, and in a matter of minutes he had forgotten about Clementine, about the whole Clementine ordeal. Mmm! Moment. Okay. Walking back from picking up his lunch from the sandwich shop, he half expected to have deja vu from the previous day and see Clementine peering into the booth. But as he approached, no one was near the booth entrance. Bartholomew relaxed and he hoped this meant he could go back to his normal routine. I have an. I hope. Oh, yeah, behind her. I hope you have an interesting answer today. Clementine's voice startled. Bartholomew, and he clearly dropped his bag lunch in surprise. She had made herself at home and stack a real case from the other day at uh, home on the stack. Okay. Notebook in hand, her cassette recorder already prepared and ready to go. Bartholomew, now more flustered than surprised, set his lunch down on the workbench so he could grab the next reel. Curiosity was swiftly winning the battle between wanting his life to go back to normal and the interesting conversation this girl introduced. Out of the corner of his eye, he noticed her watching quite intently as his hands went through the motions of loading the next film. Her eyes didn't seem to miss anything. A few minutes passed before Bartholomew turned and properly greeted Clementine. How are you today? I'm good, but I want to hear your answer. Are you ready? She gestured to the recorder. Finger hovering over the record button, she sat. Attentively, s oh, she sat. I, oh, sorry. Thought that was, again, the end of the sentence. She sat, attentively, straight back, head tilted, straight forward, eyes directly unflattering at his own. Unflattering. He shrugged, then nodded, mentally preparing half-hearted answers he randomly pulled together just in case Clementine showed up. She pressed the record button. Then, mm, I had a heart attack. Asked, what is the meaning of life? All right, all right. I'll give you a bit more thought. I can see how my answer yesterday seemed a bit scattered-brained. So... I'm going to build off of that today, and hopefully this will satisfy you. Mm -hmm. Don't make a joke. <laughs> it's three fingers enough. Mm. Sure, we get to make a decision, but again, I think it's out of our hands. When it comes to the result or the impact that choice, impact of that choice, when we make a decision, we can only choose one path over another path based on our truly limited understanding of the context in which we make that decision. We don't know what's going on, what's going to happen as a result of our decision, but we can guess as to what will happen. Isn't that all life is? A bunch of guessing? Therefore, my answer is the meaning of life is to guess the best of our ability and not to worry too much what follows. Things will work themselves out. Sounds good? Sounds good enough? See, I wanted to end it with sounding good enough, huh? That sounds good enough for you? Clementine released the recorder button and stood up. No, no, again, that's not enough. Are you really giving this question any serious thought? I'll be back tomorrow. She left quickly as she had the day before. Bartholomew felt frustrated. He'd thought of a better he'll he thought of a better answer. At least he felt he had. 
but he saw what she meant. He had created an argument against a meaning of life by removing the power for an individual to influence meaning in their own life. The night, that night, he went home, this time with some fresh soup, clam chowder, and some sort of meat noodle melody. Deep in thought, Bartholomew played with his small chunks of potatoes in his bowl. What? What is the meaning of life? He kept mouthing over and over. He tried to read the chapter in his book, but he kept, le but kept letting his mind wander. He found moving his eyes down the line the text without actually reading them. Bartholomew tossed the book towards the wall in frustration. This is an easy question. Shouldn't we all have the answer to this? I guess everyone else has uh, everyone I guess everyone else doesn't have these questions thrust in their face regularly, he thought. He lay down awake until 1:41 a.m. Then sleep overcame his body and mind. Tomorrow would work itself out in its own time. This page was intentionally left blank. <laughs> okay. Uh cards, what am I supposed to do? That so what am I doing? I'm choosing. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, ten of swords. Oh, that's it. What does that mean? Did that actually change the outcome of the story? I wonder. By the way, arguments in the other page is off the page. Hmm. Funny side note. Uh, I actually had a friend. We were in Vegas for a convention uh, in college. It was essentially his first time drinking, underage also. Um, hammered off his ass. We were walking down towards the needle. He kept asking everyone he passed on the street this question. What is the meaning of life? He thought he was being deep and philosophical rather than just being a drunk. And I mean, he asked everyone. If you had your window rolled down at a stoplight he would go to your window and ask you <laughs> we had to pull him away a couple times okay anyways <coughs> excuse me very professional 316 1969 <clears throat> let's try that again Bartholomew woke at 628 he sat up in his bed and shifted his feet mmm All right, let's try this again. Sorry. 3-16-1969. Bartholomew woke at 6.28 a.m. He sat up in his bed and sifted his feet so they rested on the floor. With his arms extended, pushing down against the bed, he, started, he stared at the blank wall parallel to his bed. The night before had been a brainstorm, some excellent rebuttals and arguments for today's answer. If he could remember them in the same state that sounded so clear to him last night. Again, it helps when you have a notepad next to the bed. He let his chin fall to his chest and slowly turned his head. He gaze, his gaze fell upon a small, four-tier bookshelf that stood at the end of his bed. Dickens, Lamour, Twain, Slanger and even a few more recent stretches of the imagination by Holbrook and Dick Slurry. Slur surely, something in those books should spark inspiration for the meaning of life. Journeys across space and time, and most of them inspire inspired for the thousands of films Bartholomew had loaded it into projectors time and time again. He rose from his bed and began much earlier than usual. His daily routine... Oh, that was one sentence. Excuse me. He took extra time to stare into the bottom of his mostly empty tea at the end of the... Fragments? I guess that's fragments. Oh yeah, fragments of tea lee that sifted at the bottom of the liquid, dancing in the harmony with any shift of the cup. Bartholomew remembered why he didn't get up this early by choice. His mind... Buzzing with thoughts and ideas he didn't even notice. A few aggressive... Hanks? Oh, honks. 
from drivers who never missed, nearly missed him crossing the street. I see to the cinema. This morning's showing was an ex uh, expected with only a minor issue, with one of the projectors emitting a strange smell for a short time. Because of the earlier shift in his morning routine, Bartholomew went to pick up his lunch at 11 a.m. He ate half the sandwich, stored the rest in a small fridge at the back of the booth. He still had an hour until Clementine would arrive. He used that time to jot down some notes. Clementine arrived right on time, visibly surprised when she saw Bartholomew was already there and waiting for her. She placed the recorder on the box and made herself comfortable in the chair Bartholomew had brought in from the lobby. Do you have a better answer for me today? She asked once, settled in. I think so. Bartholomew replied, double-checking the films. Reels. <clears throat> okay. What is the meaning of life? Oh, uh, Clementine. What is the meaning of life? Clementine pressed the record button on the recorder. He inwardly smiled to himself at how direct she was. <clears throat> Indigestion is the meaning of life. I mean, we're constantly learning what to eat, what not to eat, so... Mm. Uh, eating good food mm. and avoiding the bad. Anyways, what? Knowledge. Learning. Talking the... Taking the things that we don't know and making them known through experimentation and research. A small smirk. Uh, a small smirk sneaked onto Clementine's face. He prepared... He had prepared... Excuse me. I'm going to have to edit out a lot of this coughing and stuff I'm doing. Sorry. Mm. I was thinking last night, and I guess I thought so much that I couldn't be bothered with the usual night of sleep. The more we learn, the more we grow. The more we can use what we can use to learn new things. Through learning, we open new doors and pick up new skills. This morning... I woke up far earlier than I should have liked. I thought about all the books I've read, especially the books I decided to keep. What do they have in common? There is always some theme of discovery, some knowledge becoming known that wasn't known before. Not just the plot either, but the general theme of these books is learning. I had to learn to read in order to read them after all. Therefore. I think we add more meaning and purpose to our lives by learning and achieving advancing mentally. The meaning of life is to con continuously learn. Clementine looked at the floor and thought, what about those who don't have access? What about those who don't have access to the tools we have in education? Are their lives lesser because of that? I feel I have more questions than answers within this idea. Can there be a meaning that we all have the chance to access? There has to be more to life than this. I'll be back tomorrow. She gathered the recorder and walked out the door. Bartholomew sat back against his workbench and folded his arm. He left satisfied he had come up with more thought, a uh, more thought and what with a more Th thorough, I can read, answer, but dissatisfied that Clementine had so effortlessly panked, poked, poked, P-A-K-E, um, holes in his theory. He, by the way, I never got educated. Me never got mad at educated. Mama and them said I need to do anything but book learning, you know what I mean? Anyways, he made sure to return his normal evening half a sandwich for dinner chapter before bed and then lie in bed until clouded in his thoughts at 1256 his last thought repeated the question that was that what could be globally accessed and qualified as a meaning of life that was a sentence i think i misread this page was intentionally left blank the test how many planets are there in the solar system <sighs> I went to school at NAU, which is in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is where they discovered Pluto. 
So this question hurts. Hello, this is me from the future. See, the future is being edited. Anyways, that's a nice metaphor. The future is always being edited. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I played this whole game. The thing is, it's a novelette. So I read the whole thing, did the whole thing with the, all the game elements in the middle. I, it's something you should do yourself. Again, I could read it the whole thing, but then it's, again, kind of like telling you to buy a good book while also reading the whole book for you. So, uh, yeah, so I'm ending the video here in the future of the game anyways. It's the past for you, so I'm lost in time here. Uh, but, yeah, so, again, it's a nice little story. Definitely interesting story to go for. It's available on Steam. Ouya and uh, is on Ouya. I know it's on Razor, Steam, and I forget where else. But, anyways, I'm just here in Detroit editing the video, so I thought I'd put a proper ending to it, to tell you to try it for yourself and see, and find out what is the meaning of life, or a reason for life. Yep. Anyways, so yeah. Again, I just thought I put a proper end on this video rather than just feigned. I was gonna do like each chapter one day, but again. It's giving away the goose, as it were. So, anyways, so try it for yourself. It's fun. It's again, it's a, it's not a game. There's game elements in between each chapter, but it is a story. So come into it knowing that it's actually more of a interactive story type thing. So more story, less gameplay, but it's still interesting and good. So, again, um, just thought I'd put an end on it. So, uh, thanks again for watching, and see you next time.